over the last 18 months, I got diagnosed with ADHD and autism and at the same time started working in like personal branding and marketing and so started to talk about my diagnosis on LinkedIn and kind of grew an audience from there and then yeah I guess it's all just kind of spiralled from that point and now my job is to talk, speak, write about neurodiversity and I'm also the founder of the Unmasked community for neurodivergence as well. I have always known that I was different and I've always struggled with my mental health because of that. It kind of came to a head when I was 17 and dropped out of sixth form but I guess the first kind of time that I really noticed it I was like 13, 14, 15 and when I was 15 I was referred to the Children and Adolescents Mental Health Service so they diagnosed me with generalised anxiety disorder and anxiety related depression um, and that was kind of the reasons that I was given for the way that I was and then again this kind of got worse again two years later and they added panic disorder and agoraphobia to my list of diagnoses. I would have six months of being like very intense, very ambitious, very like scatty, very all over the place, very wanting to do everything all the time and meet all the people and do all the things and then like every six months I would go back to the crash and burn of like the tearfulness, the anxiety, the overwhelm. I think it was really disheartening because it felt like I was never going to get anywhere in life like I was already maybe at a disadvantage from not having A-levels or a degree but then it was like well I I'm never going to go up the career ladder because every six months I have to go off sick because I become so overwhelmed so how am I ever going to get a good job when six, every six months I kind of crumble. I was just really adamant that like we weren't going back to the black hole again and then I guess just by chance I was having counselling at the time. Um, I'd had like a bit of a bicker with my then boyfriend and brought it up in counselling um, and the question came up has it ever been looked into why you take things so literally um, and my answer was like no it hasn't but I think I know what you're hinting at here. So I went away and was just like Googling, Instagramming, TikToking, like anything that I could find was just like, first of all, autism, because that was kind of what she'd hinted at, I thought, with the literal thinking. And then I guess through that, I also discovered like ADHD as well, once I was like into the world of neurodiversity. I knew when I read it all that it resonated, but there were so many things that I'd like covered up and masked and like worked around for so long that I almost like didn't even recognize them in myself. But then as I started that process of like, letting myself be myself and like getting on the medication it was like you know once one layer peeled away it was all there underneath as well so I was like learning everything about myself at the same time and then literally three weeks after my diagnosis was when my post went viral on LinkedIn so I suddenly had like an audience for the first time as well so it was kind of I think that combination of suddenly having something that I really wanted to talk about and tell everyone about because I couldn't believe that I'd got to like 24 and then I suddenly found out this thing about myself that made my whole life make sense and I was like how many other people like women especially are out there without this answer and like I need that I need them all to know it was almost like I thought it was like the messiah and I did that post and it just literally like blew up out of nowhere and then people started doing their own versions like taking the post as a template and like filling in their versions of like things that they'd been told were professional like I don't know black women were talking about like how they'd been told that their natural hair wasn't professional or women were talking about how um, they'd been told that their tone of voice wasn't professional so it just kind of spiraled and spiraled and spiraled I think it got to like three and a half million views altogether the post um, and that yeah was I guess the start of me having an audience of people to talk to like as soon as you start posting something because you feel like you should or because everybody else is posting about it like people can see right through that like always the posts that perform best for me and that I'm happiest with myself are the ones where it's like I really want to talk about this thing I really want to share this thing, I've, this is my own creativity. I had never been told that anything was different about me, so as far as I was aware, the inside of everybody else's head sounded the same as the inside of my head. Um, but then when I learned that, oh, it didn't, like no, not everybody else's brain is as hyperactive as this, then it was kind of like, ah, oh, okay, like I am creative, I do have lots of ideas. Um, so one thing that I've always said that my mum said I've said from being like tiny is like I just wish my brain would shut up because like there is literally always a hundred things going on in there at once um, and I think I, I knew that was happening like I was saying like I just want it to stop I just want it to shut up 
but I didn't know that everybody else's brain didn't sound like that as well. I think content creation should always be like a labour of love. Like as soon as you start posting something because you feel like you should or because everybody else is posting about it, like people can see right through that. Like always the posts that perform best for me and that I'm happiest with myself are the ones where it's like, I really want to talk about this thing. I really want to share this thing. I've, this is my own creativity, but also like don't be afraid to like go with your gut, like go being the key word, lean into it, just just go with the flow maybe. <laughs>